Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Eminence, Heaven in Hiding, out November 26 on a Rising Empire. This album has 13 tracks, 48 minutes in length, and this is the band's four full length studio album. They are a Swedish post hardcore metalcore band. Now, outside of the intro to this record, which was perhaps the softest spot, I wasn't really a fan of how this album gets me started. But once I got over that, the overall construction of this album is phenomenal. Very dynamic, very fluid, very connected with incredible ebbs and flows, constantly changing, constantly not just changing the sound, but changing how you perceive the album and the atmosphere that it creates, allowing the record to have a lot of life across all 13 songs. An album that is built a little bit like a puzzle. It has 13 different pieces, but when you put these pieces together, it gives you the full image right in front of you. An image that doesn't really become clear until the last piece goes in and you reach the final track of the album. Once you look at the sound, obviously the violin comes into the forefront because it has such a deep impact in the experience, in the soundscape, and how you're gonna perceive this album. It adds melody, it adds darkness, it helps it helps create this blanket of somberness, very introspective sound at times, that really becomes one of the driving forces, but not the driving force. I think a lot of people will gravitate towards it, will talk about it because of the impact that it has, because of how much it jumps into the forefront, but I don't really feel like this is an album that is dictated by one single element. The soundscape of this album is dictated by how all of them come together in order to create a robust experience. You look at the drums, for example, they are heavy, they ground the album, they create a sense of movement, they create a sense of power, they have a great sound. Never throughout the experience of listening to this album do you see the drums overshadowing anything else. They're there to complement the experience, they're not there to be the experience. Almost the same as the violins, but perhaps not as noticeable, a little bit more in the background. You could say exactly the same about the guitars. The guitars work really well with everything around them. Sometimes weaving in into a little bit of a heavier side, creating a little bit more of a chunky sound that really progresses well, that creates volume, that expands the footprint of the record. Sometimes being a little bit more introspective, almost falling in line with what you're getting out of the violins, becoming a little bit more melodic, a little bit more driven, giving you a more somber side of the sound coming through a little bit more clear, creating better shapes. So when you put the violins, the guitars, the drums together as the cornerstones of the sound of this record, all of them are working as one. There's not necessarily one that overshadows the other. And I really feel like that is the strength and quality of this record. A record that has this incredible sound that's really well defined, that it's easy to understand, that it's easy to process, but also carries a lot of different emotions in it. It's a very emotionally driven record from a lyrical perspective, vocal perspective, and obviously the sound that it has. And the vocals on this album are phenomenal. The clean vocals, the harsh vocals, the layers of the vocals, actually that's something that I really enjoy throughout this record. Sometimes wanting to create a sense of intensity, a sense of aggression, a sense of heaviness as far as the vocals are concerned. And instead of bringing harsh vocals into the forefront to create that immediate impact, they decided to go with layers. I really like that. Backing vocals really help expand the footprint, make the songs feel bigger, make the songs feel more impactful. In some cases, taking an ordinary song and turning it into an anthem. You're gonna see a lot of that happening throughout this record. But the vocal choices and the vocal dynamics that this album have to offer really jump into the forefront and become one of the calling cards that this album has in store for the listener. Now, when you look at the overall construction of this album, this is one of those records that's gonna be a key album for the year of 2021. I think you can make the argument for this being the best metalcore album of 2021. I would be willing to make that argument because this album is just phenomenal across all the different elements. Sound, vocal, lyrics, atmosphere. I actually feel like this is a record that defines a new genre, doomcore. Because when you listen to this album, you see a lot of doom elements in it. And you see them in the somber nature of some of the tracks and the lyrical content and how introspective it is. And then you have the core side that makes the record feel more punchy all around. Incredible album, outstanding record from this phenomenal band. Now, as far as favorite tracks are concerned, I want to start off with Surrender. Uh, melodic, heavy, the bass, drums, and guitars 
really create the sound that is this song. Really chunky, having a lot of volume, allowing the guitars at times to break away from that sound, from that chunkiness, in order to become more melodic, in order to become more driven. The chorus is very intense, more vocally than musically, but that's enough to break away from how the verses were and allow the chorus to be a little bit more impactful, becoming heavier, if you will. Vocally, I felt that overall this track really pushes a lot of boundaries and it really pushes through all of the other elements, allowing the song to be more dynamic, allowing the song to be more engaging. Next, you have Moth to a Flame, an anthem. This track is a pure anthem. Is an anthem in terms of the sound that it has, the strings, the melodies that comes from the strings, the darkness that comes from it, the blend of heaviness and darkness. How this song moves musically is absolutely phenomenal. It's a gorgeous track from a soundscape perspective. But that anthem vibe really comes from the vocals, using layers, using backing vocals, allowing this to become almost a sing-along song if you're looking at a live setting. This song is a juggernaut in terms of the sound and the vocal performance in it. Last but not least, you have Enslaved, a more melodic, modern-driven metalcore track that keeps itself a little bit more grounded. You feel like it's about to burst, you feel like it's about to explode, it almost takes you to that edge, most of the time takes you to that edge, but never really goes over it. It starts to go a little bit more over it towards the end of the track, and then it finally, it bursts open. You reach that climatic moment of the track, and you feel that the heaviness is coming through, not just in the sound, but also in the vocals changing into a more heavy, harsher approach. I like that sense of buildup, because it took some time, it was not always exponentially coming up, it went there, then it came back down again, it went back up again, came back down again, but then finally when it reached it, it really exploded and it allowed the track to have a lot of power and a lot of movement. This is it, Eminence with Heaven in Hiding out November 26th on A Rising Empire. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles, use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.